afternoon everybody my name is brandon and i'm going to be talking about longfellow's poems uh my lost youth and the, the jewish cemetery at newport i will say that before i uh made this i did watch our professor's video on him and he gives an excellent uh, explanation on why people don't read really read his poems um anymore and it's because of the fact that there's a lot of rhythm to it and it it really throws you away from uh the uh the message the poet poetry is trying to tell you itself it it is tougher to read but you still get the idea of it and these two poems right here are absolutely amazing coming from someone that <laughs> never reads poetry um but yeah i'll get right into it so in his poem my lost youth the poem itself is about a older gentleman going through and reliving everything that he went through. Uh, in the very beginning of the poem, it talks about him, the older gentleman, where he grew up, uh, the town where he was raised, um, and the, where it was at, and it was by the sea. He recalls it being by seaside. But then it jumps to him being able to sail. And him going on a long journey across an ocean to a new place and he remembers pulling up there and seeing a fort and all the guns that were there so you can kind of get that he was almost drafted per se into a uh military and once he gets there he remembers going to war and some of his crewmates dying his captain dying um after the war, or in the next stanza, he talks about recalling the friendships of new, of old, and everything that had happened up until then. Um, I also think that the character in this poem develops something of almost PTSD, like um, whether it be really bad anxiety because of it, or actual PTSD. I, I, I can't get a feel for it, but he says that there are things of which I may not speak. There are dreams that cannot die. There are thoughts that make the strong heart weak and bring a pallor into the cheek. So I think that every time that he recalls these events, these traumatic events, and the people that he's lost, the friendships that he's lost, it makes him cry. It makes him very, very, very upset. Um, towards the end of the poem, he, um, what I think goes back to that town that he was originally from the seaside town and thinks about everything that has happened and the present why he's going back and thinking of these events because he's revisiting his lost youth and everything that he could have done he could have been anything other than what he already is um at the end of every stanza it says a boy's will is the wind's will and the thoughts of youth are long, long thoughts. So, to me, it means that as we get older, we have all these bearings on us. We aren't children anymore. We don't have these dreams like we used to. Like, for me, for instance, I used to dream about being a superhero. Like, of all things, right? But as I got older, I grew out of that. I now have to go to school. I have a job. I have to pay taxes. We don't have to deal with that stresses as a kid. And we all kind of want to go back to where we were. It's a lovely poem. Um, in his other poem, The Jewish Cemetery at Newport, this poem is all about Jewish, Jewish everything. Um, it describes people gathering at a Jewish cemetery at Newport and that Newport being Newport, Rhode Island. Um, it describes people going there and singing Hebrew songs, gathering together. Um, these people are gathered because they are uh, being appreciative of them because the Jews were forced out of Europe. Or not forced, but they were... Uh, what's the right word? The Christians over there gave the Jews a really, 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 really rough time. That's the best way I can put it because I can't think of the word off the top of my head. Um, 
and so they came over to Newport and settled there instead of Europe. Um, this poem also talks about biblical senses. It brings up Abraham, it brings up David, it brings up uh, Moses. Um, there is a lot of hate between the Christians and the Jews, and the reason he uh, brings up Moses, because it talks about their journey and what all they went through. Um, Abraham going to Egypt and freeing the Jews there, and what the Jew, what these Jews had done the in Europe, over to Newport. So it's their journey. This poem in particular was written in 1854, and if you know anything about Jewish history, it is, uh, it's not the easiest of lives. Um, Jews have been through a really, really rough time, especially within the last hundred years. Um, of course, the Egypt, they uh, helped build the pyramids for Egyptians when they were enslaved. And of course, in the 1940s with the Holocaust, that's what people really remember now about Jews. Um, and the reason I say 1854 and the recent history is because at the very end of this poem, he talks about, right, he actually says, but ah, what once has been shall be no more. The groaning earth in travail and in pain brings forth its races, but does not restore. And the dead's nations never rise again. He talked about the collapse of Jewish culture. Uh, at some point, I can't remember when, I know in history, the Jewish religion kind of fades a little bit because they spread out everywhere in the world. Um, and especially with the Holocaust that happened, I know, I can pretty much guarantee for sure, well, I won't say guarantee, but Thoreau didn't know anything like Israel would ever happen again. Israel was made in 1948, if I remember correctly. Might be wrong on that. But he never would have guessed something like Israel would happen where they all would come back together and make their own state. It, it just, it blows my mind. And it's an amazing poem. Something that I feel like uh, is very, very impactful for, especially for a religion. I know I'm going a little lengthy here, so I'll go ahead and end it, but... Thank you.